What's going on, family? I'm just here to remind you that you can get yourself a copy of my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4 of the Caribbean, by visiting my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com, and help support me as I continue on my mission to make sure that my people have our information, even though, you know, there are many people trying to stop us from learning our history. But hey, we can teach ourselves. And one of the tools we can use is my new book, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. Remember, visit my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com, to get your copy. And I appreciate your support. The Warrior Queen Muhumuza. The Nyabingi spiritual system became prominent in the Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania regions of Africa. Queen Nyabingi was the ruler of the Karagui Kingdom in modern-day Tanzania. Queen Nyabingi was married to Ruhinda, chief of the Mpororo Kingdom, which occupied the southwestern region of Uganda. Chief Ruhinda was greedy and took full control of the Karagui Kingdom by killing Queen Nyabingi. Following Queen Nyabingi's murder, it is said that her spirit terrorized Chief Ruhinda and everyone who participated in her murder. The spirit and the story of Queen Nyabingi became a symbol of resistance to many African people in Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda. Queen Nyabingi was also seen as a symbol of fertility, health, and abundance. The following of Nyabingi grew over the years, complete with initiations and cultural traditions being passed from generation to generation. Queen Muhumuza would become one of the most prominent followers of Nyabingi and was even believed to be a reincarnation of Nyabingi. I am not sure about the exact date of the birth of Muhumuza, but according to sources, she was born around 1870 in Rwanda and was given the name Muserekande at birth. She would eventually become one of the wives of King Wabugiri of Rwanda until the death of the king in 1895. Wabugiri was killed by his favorite wife, Kanjora, because she was conspiring with European colonizers to take control of the throne from his successor and place her son Musinga on the Rwandan throne. Musere Kande at the time was able to galvanize enough supporters to resist the overthrow of Kanjora until the Europeans came to Kanjora's aid. With the help of the Europeans, Musere Kande and her son were forced into exile in Mpororo, Uganda, and Kanjora's son Musinga became the ruler of Uganda at the age of 17. While in exile, Musere Kande changed her name to Muhumuza, which means she who resists from tyranny. During her time in exile, Muhumuza's spirit of rebellion grew against the tyrannical Europeans and the Ugandans that were aligned with the Europeans. As her spirit of rebellion grew, she began to amass a following of people who believed in her. Muhumuza was eventually introduced to and adopted the Nyabingi spiritual system, which helped her following and influence work. Muhumuza was accompanied by the Abakiga people of southern Uganda as they challenged the legitimacy of the rule of Kanjura. Muhumuza, now seen as a threat to the throne, caused Kanjura to enlist the help of the Germans and other African kingdoms who joined forces with the Europeans. Anti-colonial is what Muhumuza's resistance was being labeled because she was now fighting against Africans and Europeans who wanted to control the Uganda, Rwanda, and Tanzania areas. Muhumuza's influence was tremendous at this point, and she was viewed by many as the reincarnation of Queen Nahabingi. She also became the ruler of the Mpororo state because of the following she amassed. Being that Muhumuza was seen as the reincarnation of Queen Nyabingi, she was believed to have supernatural powers. She was carried around by six men on the platform shoulder high when traveling. She predicted that if her followers found the sacred Karinga drum of Rwanda, her son would become the ruler of Rwanda. She also predicted that the bullets of the Europeans and their allies would turn to water when shot at her followers. Muhumuza and her followers harvested, collected, and stored massive amounts of produce and grains to sustain themselves. As Muhumuza's following grew, they began to raid the African chiefs who aligned themselves with the Europeans. Because of these actions, she was characterized as hostile by the Europeans. As Muhumuza and her rebels' attacks on the chiefs continued, the people within their states became refugees and an issue for the colonists. So Muhumuza needed to be stopped. In 1908, during a conflict between Muhumuza, her followers, and the Europeans, Muhumuza was captured and jailed. She was jailed for three years before escaping in 1911 and returning to her people. 
Upon her return, Muhu Musa found that the British and Germans gained more power and influence during her absence, but she did not lose any of her rebellious spirit. Still having her influence and the idea that she was the reincarnation of Naya Bingi, Queen Muhu Musa was able to galvanize enough people to lead her second anti-colonial rebellion against the British and the Germans. Queen Muhu Musa was becoming a thorn in the sides of the Europeans because she would not stop rebelling against their tyranny. The British and the Germans eventually partnered to eliminate Muhu Musa. The Europeans attacked Muhu Musa and her rebels by surprise, led by Captain Reed, who commanded African and European soldiers. Muhu Musa and her rebels were formidable opponents because a surprise attack turned into a six hour battle. Muhu Musa and her rebels were eventually defeated by the Europeans. Muhu Musa was shot in the foot and captured, while 40 of her rebels were killed. She was jailed in Kampala, Uganda in 1911, where she eventually died incarcerated. The death of Queen Muhu Musa made her a martyr, the legend of Queen Naya Bingi even greater, and the Naya Bingi movement began gaining more followers. The Europeans were so fearful of the continued rise of the following of Naya Bingi that they enacted the Colonial Witchcraft Ordinance of 1912 to stop the further rebellions in the name of Naya Bingi. Because of her bravery, influence, skill, leadership, and spiritual nature, Muhu Musa became one of Africa's most memorable warrior queens. She stood face to face with colonizers and Africans who supported the colonization, backed by her people and her African spirituality to fight for the freedom of her people. To Queen Muhu Musa, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit my website at www.ontheshoulders1.com. There you can support my book series and my latest book release, On the Shoulders of Giants, Volume 4, The Caribbean. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com backslash OTSOG. And you can support me by hitting the heart button under this video. I love you all and I'll see y'all next time.